Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening. I'd like to discuss the importance of traditions and why they are so critical in our lives. Traditions offer a sense of comfort, even coziness, as family and friends come together for holidays and other special events. Traditions connect us to our histories and our family lineage, whether holidays, family reunions, weddings, graduations, retirements. Despite the occasion, traditions represent the glue that keep us together. They offer security and a unity that can even impact our mental health in a positive way. Dr. Tim Clinton, president of the American Association of Christian Counselors, opened a conference back in 2021 by stating that we don't have a mental health crisis on our hands in America, but more of a mental health disaster. Earlier this year, the Surgeon General of the United States announced that our post-pandemic world has produced an epidemic of loneliness and isolation in the United States. Traditions can challenge such isolation and loneliness by bringing people together and offering a sense of comfort and stability while also connecting us with our roots. My favorite part of traditions are the rituals that offer a kind of familiarity, a familiarity that produces comfort in addition to stability. I want you to think for a moment about all the special occasions that we reminisce with fondness or the events yet to come that overwhelm our hearts with anticipation. In both cases, traditions and rituals add significance to our lives. Experts say that rituals are powerful because they create meaning, they shape our experiences, and they even help to regulate our emotions. So think about this for a moment. Traditions offer security, familiarity, comfort, meaning, even helping to regulate emotions. They also offer a sense of belonging. Simply stated, traditions foster a sense of being. They help us feel as though we belong in this world, which is critical in a climate where so many people feel like outsiders. I read one blog that stated that since the dawn of time, Traditions fulfill our sense of being, belonging, uh, believing, and even benevolence. They convince us that we belong to a community and that we are accepted in society. On a personal note, this was very, very important to me as a child growing up in the 1950s and the 1960s, during the same time that the civil rights movement was taking place in the United States. I grew up in in San Francisco in the Bay Area, a very progressive community, and I even lived in an integrated neighborhood. However, there were reminders along the way that people of color were not welcomed to fully participate in society. I'm so grateful for a mother and a father who taught me that racism is rooted in ignorance and that we should treat all people with respect and dignity. As Martin Luther King once said, based on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Needless to say, we would gravitate toward celebrations that encouraged and fostered unity. And my absolute favorite was the celebration of the 4th of July. Looking back, I think the 4th was my absolute favorite because I felt as though I belonged. I felt as though I mattered. I felt as though I was part of the community. Long before learning about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I realized as a child that we all have a strong need to belong, especially those who, for whatever reason, have been pushed to the periphery of society. But on the 4th of July, I knew I belonged in my community, and I truly felt as though society accepted me. Let me explain. This particular podcast episode is being recorded during the month of July, and we've just celebrated the 4th, and my memories during this time of year go back to my childhood when Independence Day was celebrated by the entire community. 
It was back in the 60s. Families would gather. Stores were closed. There were no cars on the street on the 4th of July, except for the big community parades. That's where you found veteran organizations joining marching bands and community groups for the big 4th of July parade. In our little community, this was huge. Cub Scout, Boy Scout, Girl Scout troops had floats. And so did every sports team in town, including my little league baseball team. Oh, baby, we dress in our baseball uniforms. We get to ride a float all through the downtown area. And those couple of hours were just magic. People cheering, people waving, people taking our pictures. I felt this overwhelming sense of belonging, belonging to something much bigger than myself, even bigger than the things that sought to divide. I felt like an American citizen, accepted just as I was. Friends, this was a powerful feeling that has remained with me for six decades. After the parade, we'd go to our respective homes, we'd barbecue, and we'd do all the stuff that family and friends do on the 4th. But despite the fact that the parade was over, <laughs> I felt no need to take off my baseball uniform. I wanted to hold on to that feeling of belonging for as long as I could. I mention this because it underscores the fact that traditions are powerful, Rituals are powerful, and they actually do shape experiences. They actually do produce meaning. And who would have ever thought that someday I'd be employed by a university steeped in tradition like no other university? In 1992, I accepted a job as an assistant professor in the Department of Communication at Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas. Admittedly, I knew nothing about Texas A&M, but would quickly learn it's a school steeped in tradition and for good reason. Now I've come to realize that all schools have their traditions, but there's something very unique about Texas A&M University. Uh, let me give you just a bit of history. For nearly a century after its founding in 1876, A&M was an all-male military school specializing in general education, largely in agriculture and mechanical-related fields. War hero Major General Earl Rudder, class of 1932, whose troops, by the way, stormed the beaches of Normandy. He was named president of the university in 1959 and transformed this small agricultural and mechanical college into a co-ed population of students today, representing the fourth largest university in the United States as well as a top-tier research school. The Corps of Cadets remain a presence on campus, now voluntary. But what Texas A&M is known for are the traditions. For example, you don't wear a hat inside, no hats in any building. You remove cover out of respect to those who have served in the armed forces. You don't walk on the grass at Texas A&M University. The grass is a living memorial to those who served and died on the battlefield. In sports, we are the official home of the 12th man. That tradition was born during a football game in 1922. That's when the underdog Texas A&M Aggies were playing a top ranked team and they were losing players left and right and going well into their depth chart. The coach, Dana X. Bible, remembered that he had a squad man who was not in uniform. Actually, the player, E. King Gill, a legendary name in A&M culture, was in the press box. Gill was in the press box helping reporters identify players on the field. Plagued with injuries during the game and with reserves dwindling, Coach Bible remembered Gill and waved him down from the press box to the sidelines and told him to suit up. Legend has it Gill ran under the stands, put on a uniform from an injured player, and stood there. He stood the entire game waiting to go in. As legend has it, the Aggies came back and upset this highly ranked team. But Gill never went into the game. But he was the only player left on the team bench. A new tradition was established. Gill stood. He stood the entire game at the ready. This story has been passed down to Aggies for every generation for a century. As the entire student body today 
stands for every football game, every basketball game. It's a symbol of the 12th man standing at the ready to go in the game. When I first arrived at Texas A&M, I had a rather skeptical view of that tradition as well as all the others. Most outsiders don't understand. But after 15 years as both a teacher at the university and a member of the football coaching staff, as life skills coach, as well as chaplain, the traditions, each and every one of them, move me in ways hard to explain. For Aggies, these traditions mean something very special. They remind us that we belong to something much bigger than ourselves, something that is rooted in the history and the fabric of this great country, something that goes way beyond income or educational level or color or gender. We are Aggies. The Aggies are we. The comfort, the security, the sense of belonging, just priceless. Friends, please, please, please don't take for granted holidays, family gatherings, special days in life. Don't take for granted the rituals and the traditions. You may not realize it at the time, but your life is becoming richer as a result of you commemorating the moment. And you're linked to something, something bigger than you, something that offers great and significant meaning for the rest of your life. And I think in this present day, in light of everything seeking to divide us, I think we all could benefit from celebrating traditions. It may be just what our collective mental health needs. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audiobook right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.